Hello and uh, welcome one and all. In this session, we will build on from the previous two where we installed PostgreSQL and SQL Server. We have set up both of these environments and restored sample databases. So in this session, we will use SQL Server AdventureWorks database as a source and load data into PostgreSQL with Python. Be sure to check both of these videos out if you want to follow along. I'll leave the link in the description below. An ETL, Extract, Transform, and Load Pipeline is a fundamental type of workflow in data engineering. The goal is to take data from a source, it can be an API, a database, or a file, and transform this data and then load it into a destination database. We will use Python and in particular Pandas library to build a pipeline. Pandas makes it super easy to perform the ETL operations. The full source code is available on GitHub. An ETL pipeline consists of three general components. Extract, get data from a source. In this example, we'll extract data from SQL Server. Transform, structure, format, or clean the data depending on your needs or final deliverable. You can perform all of these operations with Pandas library. We won't be spending much time on this, we would rather follow the ELT or extract load approach. I want to demonstrate how easy it is with Python to perform extract and load. And finally, load to write the data to external destination where it can be used by another application or users. We will load the data to Postgres database. Let's do some basic setup in Postgres before writing ETL pipeline. I have PG admin 4 open and I have a new query window open with a script to create a database called AdventureWorks. I'll go ahead and execute this script to create this database. We can refresh the databases folder to see if this new database is created. And if you see AdventureWorks there, congrats, your database is created. Also, I'll go ahead and create a user called ETL with password and I'll grant this user permissions on the AdventureWorks database. We get a success message and we should see a new user called ETL under the login and groups roles once we refresh it. Our Postgres database is set up. Let's move to SQL Server and create the same user. This is the script and we are creating an ETL user along with login. We are giving necessary permissions to connect and read data from AdventureWorks DW2019 database. The ETL user is created. Just an FYI, I restored the AdventureWorks 2019 database in the SQL Server video. That's the normalized version. So I went ahead and restored the DW or the data warehouse version following the same steps. So you can download this database and restore it following the same steps. Let's begin coding the ETL pipeline in Python. I am using PyCharm to code this pipeline. You can use your preferred ID or a text editor. As usual, we'll import the required libraries at the top. We will need SQL Alchemy to interact with Postgres SQL, PyODBC to query the SQL server, Pandas to carry out the data extract and data load part. I am importing OS module as I have stored the username and password in the system environment variable. You can type those in directly if you wish, but it's a good habit not to hard code your credentials in the script and store them separately. The aim is to protect the credentials from being exposed in the ETL script. You can use a configuration file or system environment variables. I'll first grab the password from the environment variable. So we can get the password with os.environ and by passing in the key for the password. Similarly, we can get the user ID and store these in local variables. I'll also define a variable to store the SQL Server driver. I am using SQL Server native client 11 and if you have been following along the channel, then you should be familiar with it. Otherwise, you need to install it on your machine. I'll leave the link in the description below. I'll save the server and the database name in the variables as well. 
Now we are ready to code the extract part. I'll define a function called extract. Let's put our code in a try except block. First, I'll define a source connection. Our source connection is to SQL Server, and for this, we'll use the connect method from PyODBC. And to the connect method, we will supply the driver, which is the SQL Server native client 11, the server name, along with the instance. Since we are using the SQL Server Express version, it has a default instance SQL Express. Database name, user ID, and the password. This connection is saved in src underscore con variable. We are going to go ahead and create a cursor from this connection. Cursor allow Python code to execute SQL command in a database session. Cursor are bound to the connection. And from the cursor, we can invoke the execute method and supply it the SQL script. I will supply it a script that gets the table name from the system schema in SQL Server. And I am limiting the number of tables to six, so we don't have to process the entire schema. Then we call the fetch all on the cursor to get the records. Records are in a list format, so we have to iterate over them. So for tbl in src underscore tables, and then within the loop, I am calling the pandas read SQL query method. And in this method, I am building a SQL query with f string. I'll supply it the tbl with index of zero, so we get the table name as a string. Then we supply the connection to the database. This will query the data from a table and save the result in a data frame. Once we have the data, then we will call the load method, which we will code next. And to this method, we will supply the data frame and the table name. In the accept block, we print the exception and finally, we close the connection once we are done. We are done with that data extraction part. Let's define a load function that will load the data in PostgreSQL. I'll call the function load, and it takes two arguments, a data frame and table name. We will wrap our code in a try except block here as well. I'll declare a variable for the number of rows that we are importing from the source. Then we create a connection to Postgres with SQL Alchemy Create Engine. We supply the user, password, and the server name. It also requires the port number and the database. We save this into engine variable. Then we display a message, how many rows we are processing and from which table. To save the data into Postgres SQL, we call the toSQL function from pandas and supply it the table name, and to the table name, we append stg underscore to declare that this is a staging table. Then the engine, which is the connection to Postgres. And if table exists, we supply the replace argument. This technique is called truncate and load, so it'll erase the data each time it runs and reload it into the destination table. Next, we set the rows imported to the data frame length and print the success message. If there are any errors, we cache them in the exception. This is all the code required to perform extract and load operation from SQL Server to Postgres with Python. In essentially 40 lines of code, we built this process with Pandas. Pandas library makes it super easy to perform data operations. Let's call the extract function to initiate the whole process. We will wrap this in a try except block as well. Our code is ready. Let's save our work and give it a try. I'll open a command prompt and bring pgadmin up. Let's first expand and refresh the table node in our database. We don't have any tables at the moment. Let's go ahead and execute our code and it is extracting and loading the data and I'll refresh the table. We should see new tables in our database now. I will let the process complete this is it, our extract and load process is complete. Let's query a table, confirm that we have data. And the query runs successfully and it produces results. So our ETL pipeline successfully loaded the data in Postgres. 
we can compare the number of rows in the source and destination to further test our work. But I'll leave that for you. This is how we build an ETL pipeline in Python. I hope you enjoyed this session. Now you can schedule the script with Windows Scheduler or with a cron job or with another scheduling tool so it runs on a schedule and imports the data on regular intervals. I'll cover how to create and schedule ETL pipelines with Apache Airflow next. This is all for now. Share, like, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.